Hello survivors, hello family and friends. This is Roy from Bootsy Sweetheart's Guide to Life and Other Disappointing Experiences with another fun project. Uh, I always find it interesting how one project inspires something brand new. Um, and you may remember my very simple bear pouch, bear necessities. I'll put the video link up when uh, I'm finished with this. Well, I needed a zipper pull. And I researched on the internet and I saw a couple of things and I came across something called a button tassel. And uh, we're going to explore that in this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Tassels are so much fun and they're so pretty and they're all kinds. You can uh, really do a lot of research on the internet to see how to make tassels of all kinds. This is my take on it. Um, I was kind of interested. There was a, I thought they were just plain decorative, but there's all kinds of history behind tassels. Uh, these are the tassels I made after I was motivated looking for my uh, bear necessities pouch zipper pull. Uh, and unfortunately or fortunately, how these things go, I've become addicted to this and to put everything else on the back burner while I was doing this. Now again, you can look on the internet for as many sites as there are for making tassels. My take is very simple. You know, they Some put them around books. There are tassel makers you can buy. Um, all kinds of money you can spend. I simply take a piece of cardboard, whatever size I want. In this case, I want to try Oh, never try something new when you're videoing, but I'm going to try to make a small one. Um, just want to square this edge off a little. And all I do is put a little notch. That's a little bit too big, so I'm going to go to the other side and put a, a smaller notch in. Let me cut that curve off a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to make a very slight notch and you'll see how that comes in handy to um, hold the thread and uh, then what you do is feed thread a whole bunch of buttons okay which I did here and of course the needle is stuck um, I use tapestry needles otherwise um, there's more blood on the project than is necessary. Um, let me put these aside. So you thread the buttons onto the cord, whatever kind of cord you want. I have this silver, I mean this gold twine kind of cord. This is ordinary packing twine. This is crochet thread. Um, this black one is um, um, floss, embroidery floss. This is cotton thread, uh, crochet thread. This is cotton crochet thread. Uh, this is more floss. Um, so you can do whatever, whatever um, cording you like. And then what I do to make it a little bit easier, I tape the beginning edge down, the beginning of the cording. And then I just load all of these in my hand. Very simple, right? I mean, we all know how to make tassels. This is just a lot of fun. And you can see after a while you're going through your button boxes. I have a gazillion. If I tell you I have a gazillion someday, I'm going to have to just show you. I could make a billion of these and still not have run out of buttons. And all you do is slide it down. If they move up a little bit, the ones that you did before, you see how this has moved up? Don't worry, they're, they're just sliding up. They did, the thread didn't, the cording didn't get shorter. And you keep doing that 
until you use all the buttons. Now the first one I saw used 12 buttons. It was kind of crowded. These would seem crowded as it is enough. So um, I think here I used nine for this one. And you wind up with this little animal. Really sweet. I like the colors. Um, and at this point I cut off the um, extra thread and it helps, at least it helps me not worry about this whole thing unraveling is if I put some kind of clip, I can use paper clips here, I've got a uh, like a, an old binder clip. I just want to hold that for a little bit. Um, take the tape off and um, I'm going to thread my tapestry needle again and I'm going to go under all of those threads on this side. Pull them up a little bit. And again this is the way I do it so on the back I'm going to take the back thread, the back cord, and of course that one's all frayed. I have this, uh, where did I put it? I have a great little needle threader. I don't know where I got it, but I've always had it. And for these bigger needles, this is perfect, does the trick for the bigger cord and the bigger needles. And now here, I'm going to go, this is coming around, you see how this is on the left, my left. I'm going to make sure this goes on to my right. And that's really the hardest part because now I can take this off and cinch this at the top. little bit of a knot. You may hear the airplanes. We are 10 miles, not even, 8 miles from JFK Airport. I grew up under the airplanes. So I get kind of used to it and forget that they're there. So here's my tassel. It Basically the tassel itself is done. And then you slide it off the cardboard and that notch at least keeps everything in a little bit of control. Now <clears throat> You can now wind more thread around the uh, head of the tassel to make these really pretty handle kind of things for it. I um, for this one I'm gonna I am going to tie this but uh, not as much as you see on the others because I'm going to cover it and you'll see in a minute how that w how that works. So I just cut another little piece of thread um, and I'm gonna well you can actually this would help if I took a pin and there's my pins here they are sorry I took a pin and just held this so there's a little bit of tension there. So I'm going to take a little piece of thread, in this case the same cording. And for this particular one I'm just going to tie a knot and not worry too much about winding the cord around. That one I think I'll make another video because these are so much fun of other ideas I have for tassels. Now, I, I use these tassels for uh, embellishments on hand, handbags, mostly. Um, my husband's using them on his journaling. Now, I don't know how many crocheters, sewers are familiar with or into journaling, making junk journals, shabby chic journals, memory journals. It is a wonderful community of craftspeople. Um, I would encourage you to 
hook on to um, a couple of the sites. Um, I think I'll put some links up if I remember, because my memory is, isn't what it used to be, uh, to the people who make journaling and mixed media mashup. So now that the tassel is done, the first one I saw was, was this one, similar to this. Uh, it used much, much heavier twine, and the uh, buttons were sort of separated like on this one. This one I like a lot. Um, but you'll notice I needed something to cover the head of the tassel. I'm not sure I particularly care for this look here. This is a little unfinished, but anyway, I put it on a paper clip. And uh, it works well for a bookmark. Um, it also works well for a zipper pull. This is a little big. As you can see, I used some smaller paper clips here. And uh, I bought some really big ones, which should be fun. But I needed something to cover this. Um, I saw one where they used a bead. I saw another where... Um, they use the button. Now where is the one with the button? Of course I can't find it. But anyway, there was one that I made where I, I put a button here. Oh, that's on the Bear Necessities pack. <laughs> See, they put a, a button. This comes off so easily uh, as a paper clip. There was one that I just left blank without a covering for the head, and I put a lobster claw on it just so that uh, it's removable. I love this little one. Um, but what I wound up doing was crocheting tiny little circular motifs, gluing and then sewing them on. And this is the one that caught a lot of attention. It's very, very pretty. Um, it's a combination of glue and sewing. And they're very, very simple to make. You, you have a very small crochet hook. I don't know if you can even see the point of it. Um, can you see how tiny that hook is? Very, very tiny. Um, but it does allow you to make some very, very fine crocheted motifs. And you just carry the, in this case, double crochets all the way around. I will have a um, video on this because um, it's part of making flowers. So you just go in through a s circle that you've made. And I'm not even counting, I'm just making double crochets until it looks all filled out. In this case, I wanted to have four colors showing. Um, so I didn't, oops, see it's very easy, especially when you're chatting, to make a mistake there. So, but, uh, and I'm not crocheting in the best position. So once you finish that, like any crochet project, you connect the circle. In this case I'm just going to do a slip knot, just like that. And I have My circle motif. And now I have two of them. I also have yarn stuck to my hand. And we will use them to cover the head of the rainbow tassel that I just made. Okay, let's finish up this fun project. Uh, so many ways to do this. 
what I'm going to do right now is sort of an easier way. Um, I'm going to, my little medallions have a front and they have a back. And when you make these, you can see the front and the back. I'm sorry about some of the scenes here. I was not really in the center of the screen. I'll get better. I keep saying that, but I will. I will. So what I'm doing here is lining up the head of the tassel with the medallion. And for this medallion, I'm going to put just a little bit of glue around. Some of them I sew. This one I think I'll glue. Uh, I'm using a fast tack glue. You can add decorative stitching later on for sure. Okay, there. Then let me just put a little here so that I'm sure it's going to stick. You can see this is the back. I don't know if you can really see. It's so tiny. It's not going to focus right. But there is a front and a back. Let me just glue this. You can use hot glue too. It just makes a lot of strings. You know how that works. Um, let me hold this down with the crochet hook. I was going to put a coin so you could see that this is the size of approximate size of a nickel. Putting that on there. Now that will that will stick pretty quickly. Um, now I'm going to use this for a handbag, so I did not put the paper clip in, but I'll show you in a minute uh, how to do that. And the other thing I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to put a little dot of glue, Whoop, a little less than that. <laughs> uh, it'll dry clear though. And I'm putting a little um, pearl bead right in the middle. That'll actually let me take some of that and put this one in the back since I've got all that extra glue on there and pick up another one. And put it on the other side. Actually, that one's too big. Here's the little one. Squeeze them in, hold them for a second, and here we go. Isn't this pretty? You'll also notice that uh, green is missing. That fell on the floor while I was chatting away with you. Yeah. Now this is basically done. This um, is going to be sewn on to a handbag. I don't think I have the bag here. But I make flowers and here's a bag that's under construction. And the one I have is a pretty colorful bag and it'll go something like that. You see? On the handbag as a little embellishment, kind of fun. There's so many uses to these. Um, now let me show you just a little piece of advice, a hint, when you're starting out. This I just have a little buttonless, <laughs> a buttonless tassel. Um, if you want to put a paper clip or even a jump ring. This is a good time to do it. I waited on the one that we're making um, because we're not, I don't need one, so I didn't do this. But this is probably the best time to put this clip or whatever it is you're going to uh, hang it from, uh, even a lobster claw with a jump ring. Now I'm going to take the clip off. And you'll see that the paper clip 
oops, is secure and you've got a nice bookmark. Um, you have a nice embellishment. Um, I've used safety pins uh, with jump rings. Uh, lots of clever ways to use these. Now, certainly what I would suggest in the beginning, I'm a little bit more reckless, um, but what I would suggest is cut a couple of pieces of cording, cut, uh, or just one piece, it doesn't really matter, so that when you take the um, tassel off the cardboard and you want to tie the head of the tassel together again here it would help if I had a, a pin so you had a little stress stress here and could have used a little bit more thread a little longer cording and they had Cinch that really tight, because that's the only thing holding this thing together, you see? Cinch it really tight, and at this point you can do um, some of the wrapping. And the one I just made now doesn't have buttons. Um, why is there a third one? Oh, I picked up an extra piece here. This guy I do not want in there. I want these two shorter pieces. Make a nice tight knot. Now you can do whatever you want with the tassel. It's probably not going to go anywhere once you get that all cinched in. You see how nice that is. Okay, let me show you. Okay. Now, this one is a regular tassel without any buttons or beads, so you just cut the uh, loops. I, there are so many ways to make these tassels. Um, and again, my, my little medallions would work well here. This one's, ooh, oh, I like this one. It's a little too big. What do you think? It's a little too big. But without the buttons, it's pretty as well. And then you trim it, give it a beard, a, trimming. Um, not the way I'm doing it. Please don't do as I do. These aren't the best scissors for that, but anyway, here we go. So, button tassels. Make them, use them. They're fun. Um, and until the next time, in the words of my TV mentor, may she rest in peace, Nancy Zeman. Bye for now.